Hi there. Now, when you're working with geometric series, one of the problems that tends to crop up that can cause problems, I find, for a lot of people is these kind of investment style questions. And what I've got is an example here, which I'll show you how we go about tackling such questions. We've got a girl invest £500 at the start of each year in an account paying 3.5% interest per year. And at the start of each year, she puts in another £500. After how many years has this account accumulated more than £20,000? So to do this, what I would suggest is that you build up slowly the amount that she saved in her account after one year, two years, three years, looking for a pattern. And then we'll go for a general time period, let's say n years, and see if we can figure out what that sum would be. So let's start off then with the amount in general, an intro here, amount saved after, and we'll just have that as our heading. So we can look at one year and then we'll go on to two years, three years and so on. Now after one year she's got her £500 and then it pays interest at three and a half percent. So we've just got to do 500 and we're increasing this by three and a half percent so that's 103.5 divided by 100. In other words the decimal 1.035. That's our multiplication scale factor. Now, don't work this out, okay? Let's just go on to the second year, okay? So we'll look at two years, the amount she saved after two years. Well, she's got this amount after one year and she puts in another £500 at the start of the year. So that's going to be 500 plus this amount here. So it's going to be 500 plus 500 times 1.035. So that's the amount that she's now got at the start of the year and we've got to increase this by 3.5% to work out how much she's got at the end of two years. So I'm going to take all of that and multiply it by 1.035. And what I'm going to do now is just expand this and you'll start to see a pattern emerging. What we've got is 500 times 1.035. Okay, so 500 times 1.035. And then for the second term, it's going to be 500 times 1.035, and that is squared. Now, if I just put to the power one up here, you might be able to start to see a pattern emerging. So don't work this out any further, just leave it in this expanded form. Let's go on now to three years. Okay, the amount after three years. So this is the amount she had at the end of two years. She now adds another £500 to the account. So we'll do 500 added to this amount here. So just copy it out again. So we've got 500 then times 1.035 plus 500 times 1.035 all squared. And this amount is the at the start of the year and at the end of the year this is increased by 3.5%. So we need to multiply this by 1.035. And if we expand this, what we get is 500 times the 1.035, okay, and then plus 500 times 1.035 times another 1.035. So that's 1.035 all squared there. And then finally, plus 500 times 1.035 and that is cubed. So hopefully you're starting to see a pattern emerging. We're in a position now to be able to carry on and just look at how much should be in after let's say n years, the total amount saved after n years. You should be able to see that each one of these 
terms that we've got has got a 500 in. So I could pull 500 out as a common factor. And then if that's the case, then I've always got 1.035 multiplied by the 500, as you can see in each of these examples. So it's going to be 1.035 there. And then this series carries on up where we square 1.035, then we cube it, and that was for three years. Remember here, we just squared it when it was two years, and we had it to the power 1 when it was 1 year. So for when it's n years, this is just going to carry on as 1.035 squared plus 1.035 cubed and so on all the way up until your last term is 1.035 to the power n. It always ends on the power that corresponds to the number of years here. So that would be our general formula for the amount saved after n years. Now, do you recognize this part in here inside these square brackets? What we're doing is multiplying each term by 1.035. What we've got here is the summation of a geometric progression. So that's that bit in there. This would be Sn the sum of the first n terms of a geometric progression. Now you should be familiar with Sn, the sum of the first n terms of a geometric progression. It's equal to a, the first term, all multiplied by the common ratio to the power n minus 1, all divided by r minus 1. And a, the first term here, is 1.035, and the common ratio is also 1.035. We're multiplying each term by 1.035. So if I just border this off, okay, then what we've got is the 500 here. So therefore, 500 multiplied by the first term, A, which is 1.035. And then you've got that multiplied by the common ratio to the power n. Common ratio is 1.035 again, and that's multiplied to the power n, and then we subtract 1. And all of this is divided by r minus 1. So in other words, 1.035 minus 1. So that is this quantity here. And we know that this amount saved after n years has got to be greater than or equal to the 20,000 here. So it's greater than or equal to 20,000. Now, the denominator here is just 0 0.035. If you multiply it with the 20,000 and divide both sides by the 500 and the 1.035, that's just going to leave you with this bracket here, 1.035 to the power n okay, minus 1. And doing that calculation, you should get that this is greater than or equal to 1.3526, and so on. So do check that out. 20,000 times the denominator here, which is really 0 0.35, and then divide by 500 and 1.035. You should end up with 1.3526, and so on. So if you Add 1 to both sides, you're therefore going to get 1.035 to the power n is greater than or equal to 2.3526, and so on. And at this point, you need to use logs. If you take logs, say, to the base 10 and use the power rule, you're going to get n out the front times the log of 1.035 is greater than or equal to the log of 2.3526 and so on. And if you divide both sides now by the log of 1.035, you're going to get that n is greater than or equal to the log of 2.3526 and so on, divided by the log of 1.035. And working this out, 
you should find that n has to be greater than or equal to 24.86 and so on. And if we're after how many years has this account accumulated more than 20,000, well n's got to be a positive integer and the least value it can be has to be 25 if it's to be greater than 24.86. So therefore it's going to be after 25 years. So the least n equals 25 years. So I hope that's given you an idea how to go about these kinds of questions. The secret is not to actually work out the value of these calculations here, but to leave them in this expanded form so that you can then try and find out a pattern. Okay, And then, as I say, once you've established that pattern, you normally can find that you've got the summation of a geometric series in there, Sn. And from that, you can work out n generally by using logs. Okay?